memory techniques themselves, these are special techniques for memorizing, started in terms of our Western civilization with the Greeks. And certain Greek politicians would get up and they'd say, um, you know, friends, Romans and Greeks, <coughs> it gives me great pleasure to talk today about, and then they would list 250 Greek states or colonies or whatever. People in the audience would say, uh, could you tell us about number 55? And they'd say, oh, yes, of course, you mean so-and-so. And they would mention it. And they actually were elected to the Senate in both Greece and Rome on their ability to memorize and order mentally without any notes. And they use these special memory techniques, obviously not knowing then as much as we know about the brain. But what is interesting is that the techniques they used are identical to the major areas that we have been discussing concerning our knowledge of the human brain. So what I'd like you to do on a new sheet of paper is just to make notes of the general memory principles, and then I'm going to teach you a simple technique for memorizing 1 to 10. We're then going to do a little exercise to see that you can memorize more than you did on the initial test, and then we'll talk about the way in which you can apply this memory technique to personal life, family life, business life, cultural, community life. So the memory principles, the major things you need to do in order to remember things are the following. Number one, associate. Make links between things. We forget primarily because we lose the association. We lose the connection. And that can cost in business terms sometimes millions of dollars if the connection is lost. So association is number one. Number two is imagination. Essential when you are memorizing to use your imagination. I'll go in a bit more into detail on these as we progress. Number three is order. Some form of order in what you are memorizing is necessary if you're going to memorize well. Next is exaggeration. Exaggeration. You make things bigger or smaller. Exaggeration can be reducing things as well. Next and incredibly important is your senses. There's actually a word for that. It's called synesthesia. S-Y-N-A-E-S-T-H-E-S-I-A. -E -E synesthesia. And that means the combining of the senses. Now, in terms of memory, I mentioned in the very beginning that it's possible for people to have remembered 10,000 things and got nearly all of them memorized perfectly. There are case histories of human beings who have lived, and some of them living, who seem to have absolutely perfect memories. And their brains were the same as ours, same as yours. No real difference, except that they were using these special techniques. There was one man who's known as S, who was a Russian, and they discovered him taking notes, or not taking notes, in fact, in a, a journalist meeting in Moscow. And the editor was speaking, everybody was taking notes, and S wasn't. And they finally said, you know, look, you're supposed to be taking notes of what the editor's saying here. And he got very embarrassed because he couldn't really understand what notes were for. And they said, look, you know, you're supposed to remember everything the man said. And he said, yes, I, I, I know that, but I do. And he felt really upset because he thought that note-taking was something he didn't understand. And he'd always tried to conceal the fact, but he didn't know what it was for. And they said, look, you take notes because you're supposed to remember what he says. And he said, yeah, but I remember it all. I remember it. I know what he said. And they said, yes, we know you remember what he said, but you're supposed to remember all of it. And he said, yes, yeah, I, you know, I know that. I, I remember all of it. And they said, prove it. And he stood there and he gave word for word, inflection for inflection, comma for comma, the entire speech. And they said, we got one. <coughs> Rushed him off to Moscow University, introduced him to a man called Alexander Luria, who started to test this man. And he said to him things like, well, Mr. S, I'm going to say some things to you, and I want you to repeat what I say. And Luria would say, ha ga na la ba na ja ga ha na ba kwa na ha na ga ba on for about five minutes, and then say, what did I say? And the fellow would say, well, quite obviously, ha ga na la ba 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 and give it all back. And then Luria would say to him, well, this was about 12 years on into their relationship, he'd say, do you remember when we first met? You know, I gave you a number of tests. 
The seventh test I gave you was on these kind of nonsense sounds. And before Luria could even say, you know, and they were like, S would say, oh, you mean the one where you went ha ga na la ba da do 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 and repeat them all perfectly. And again, when Luria would say, well, uh, can you remember what you were doing 12 years ago on January the 13th? And S would kind of scratch his chin and say, uh, what time? His memory was that perfect. Now, it seems that many of us may have a phenomenal recall ability, and the technique is, how do we get it out? And I was talking about synesthesia, and synesthesia is the way that the great memorizers use their memory. What they do is, they wrap all their senses, their taste, touch, sight, hearing, emotion, and so on, around the thing they want to remember, associating it to something else, and exaggerating making absurd, right-brained, imaginative images. So to memorize something, you need to link it to something already known in some kind of order, use your imagination, and use all your senses. So what I'm going to do is teach you the first of many, many memory systems to give you, if you like, the introduction. You've got the principles, you understand how memory works while you're learning, and after you're learning, now you're going to learn how to especially consolidate whatever it is you want to remember by using a special technique. The technique that I'm going to teach you is called the number rhyme technique. So if you just make a note, it's the number rhyme technique, and it's based on the numbers 1 to 10. So it's the number rhyme technique, and the numbers are 1 to 10. And we're going to use these memory principles the techniques themselves are called mnemonic, mnemonic techniques, M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C, mnemonic techniques after the Greek goddess of memory, mnemosine. So you have the numbers 1 to 10. What I'd like you to do is to write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then next to each number, we're going to put the memory technique rhyming word. And when I give you the rhyming word, I want you to use your imagination, use your senses to get a multi-sensory, synthetic picture of that word in your brain. So number one is bun. You know, a nice creamy cake bun. So in your head, get the image, right? Taste it. Mm -hmm. Feel what it's like. See the colors of it. Feel again. Mm -hmm. Even hear yourself eating it. Smell it. So you really have one is always bun. Number two is shoe. And I want you here, don't just think of the general idea of shoe. Think of a very special shoe. It has to be your specific shoe. What color is the one in your brain? How big is it? How old is it? What's it made of? What does it look like? Get your, what does it smell like? Get your senses around it. Number three is tree. Three is tree. And again, make it a special tree. Could be the tree in your front garden, in your backyard, the tree you climbed up as a child. Make it a very special one, and again, get all your senses around it. Number four is door. And again, make this a special door. It could be your bedroom door, your front door, but make it a very specific door. It's very important in these memory systems to have something which is in your brain personalized, personalized and unique. Number five is beehive. Very good one there for both visual image and a sound image and a feeling image. Easy to get your senses around these. And you notice that the system is based on the number and a word, which is an image word, that rhymes with a number. One, bun, two, shoe, three, tree, four, door, five, beehive. Six is sticks. Sticks. A bunch of sticks. Now again, feel them with your hand. See in your own mind the size of your bunch of sticks. What color are they? What do they feel like? What do they taste like? You can use all your senses on all these images. Number seven is heaven. Now, I leave you to imagine your own idea of heaven. But make sure you've got a very clear, precise, 
specific image of heaven in your brain. Number eight is bait. You can think here of wriggly worms for catching fish. You can feel them, taste them. But you've got to get all those senses involved, smell them, see them moving. Number nine is a giant vine, like the Jack and the Beanstalk vine, something which is so giant it goes right up to the stars. Enormous. And see it, see the grapes on it, see the leaves on it. Really get that totally wrapped in your mind. Number 10 is hen, H-E-N. Get your own hen. What color is she? What kind of personality has she got? What kind of sounds does she make? What does she feel like? Now those are your 10 key memory words, and you memorize those for the rest of your life. Right? For the rest of your life, those are the prime hooks onto which you are going to associate, link imaginatively, anything you want to remember up to 10. So let's just, you just cover your books for a moment or turn them over, and we'll have a quick little test on this. I will test you first, and then you can quickly test each other, and then we'll actually ask you to memorize things using the technique. What's the key word? These are all key memory words for number seven. seven. Number nine. Fine. Fine. Number one. Fine. Fine. And as you do this, see in your mind what happens. You know, see if you suddenly get that little picture, right? And if it's the same as the one you originally imagined. And feel how quick it is that you can actually get it. Ten. 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 Three. 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 Five. 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 One. One. Three. Three. Eight. Eight. Seven. Seven. Two. Two. Nine. Fine. Seven. Seven. Six. 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 Seven. 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 Two. 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 One. Five. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. 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 Six. 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 Seven. 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 Eight. Eight. Nine. Five. Five. Ten. Ten. Nine. Five. Nine. Five. Eight. 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 Seven. 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 Six. 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 Five. Beehive. Four, Door. three, three, two, two, two one. Bang. Okay, spend a minute, just a minute, testing yourself for speed and accuracy in groups of three. Start that now, and then we're going to test it. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do, <laughs> just say hi instead of be. But what I'm going to ask you to do now is to, in a sense, test yourself, right? I'm going to ask you to give me the things that you are going to have to remember, right? I'm going to ask you to give me the things that you're going to have to remember. So, for number 10, what do you want this group to remember? Anybody? And think of anything as ridiculous and absurd as you like. And this group, who are all super, super power memorizers, will memorize it for you. What we, a tennis ball, right? So number 10, what's the memory word? Yeah. Right? Has got to be tennis ball. How are you going to remember that? Using your senses, your exaggeration, your imagination, <coughs> your humor. How do you make them connect? You throw, a tennis ball. you throw a tennis ball at your hen, what happens? Kill it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a macabre kind of memory <laughs> technique there, but okay, so you, as, as it hits, what happens to the hen? Explosion of feathers, right? It <laughs> squawks and squeals. Do you, can you hear it? And you feel what it's like to be this poor little hen. How big is the tennis ball? Huge, right? I mean, a really big tennis ball, right? Okay, that's number 10. Now, if you could make it slightly more pleasant. Uh, <laughs> what do you want us to remember for number nine, anybody? Clark. A cloud, right? Number nine is a cloud. What's the key word for nine? Mind. 
Vine. Vine. And you've got to remember cloud. OK, now the vine goes through the cloud, but you know it's a big vine anyway, and you've got to make sure you're going to memorize that. Now, there might be clouds up there anyway, so how are you going to memorize this special cloud and the vine? Lightning coming out of the cloud, and what's happening to the lightning and the vine? It's striking, right? It's striking the vine, and the vine's up there trying to grab and hold on to the cloud so it doesn't fall. And you get the grapes, get the leaves, feel the lightning in that giant cloud, which is the thing you've got to remember, right? Okay, number eight. What does somebody want us to remember for number eight? Eight? Bike. A bicycle. A bicycle. Number eight is a bicycle. What's your key word for number eight? Bait. Bait, Bait and bicycle. Stupid imagination, <laughs> senses, right? Get them all going. How are you going to... Along and squishing them all under the wheel. It's all horrible. <laughs> 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 ah, right? I mean, you know, you're cycling along on this beautiful new bike and you come into this great mass of bait worms, right? And you squidge all the way through and you can feel it and smell it and it's all over your bike, right? Bike. Okay, number seven. What are you going to remember for number seven? Somebody? Angel. <laughs> now, that's an interesting one, actually. You see, you say angel, right? That's easy. Why is it easy? That is really difficult. Now, why is it difficult? Too obvious, right? Because you think heaven, you're obviously probably going to have an angel up there anyway, and then you think, what is it I'm supposed to remember? And your angel's gone, so you, that's a hard one. How are you going to remember specially angel in heaven? But you have the devil. Then you're going to remember devil, right? So you're going to get, start to get other associations. You've got an angel, you've got your image of heaven, and you've got to make it somehow different, imaginative, and absurd. By heaven thy name will be freedom, then you're going to remember freedom. We've got to remember angel. <laughs> angel with a swimsuit. There's kind of lots of angels up there, but there's this one particular, right, who's got a swimsuit on. <laughs> and so you're remembering specific angel, angel, right? Seven heaven, and you see lots of them, but there's this one special. You've got to make them stand out, so you're remembering angel. <laughs> She's a self hey, right. <laughs> we'll stop that one. I mean, that's getting as bad as the dead chicken. <laughs> okay, number six. What do you want us to remember for number six? Let me give you one. Orange, right? Nice and orange. Number six. That's hard. What's the key word for number six? Sticks. 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 And you've got to remember an orange, the fruit. <laughs> yeah, get your, how big is your orange? Big, right? What are you going to do with your stick? <laughs> impale it. What happens as you impale it? Juice, the juice does what? Where? Everywhere, right? Up your nose, in your mouth, in your ears, over your best suit, all that. You can feel it, right? Really got to get those senses wrapping around. Okay, what else? Number five. What do you want to remember for number five, anybody? Beehive. <laughs> <laughs> That's your key word, well done. What are we gonna remember? <laughs> what are we gonna remember with it? Cotton. 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 Right? Cotton. As in shirts and stuff. Cotton and beehive. How are you gonna remember that? That's a good one. That's hard. Lots of imagination. You're running in the middle of a cotton field. You're right in the middle of a cotton field. And all of a sudden, you step on a beehive. And all of a sudden, <laughs> you step on a beehive. Now, in the, what's the cotton field like? Huge cotton things. Giant <laughs> cotton things, right? <laughs> How big are you in this field? Midget. A little midget, right? You can feel all the cotton, right? See these giant things, and then what do you do? You step in a beehive. You step in a beehive, and what happens? Stunned. It hurts. <laughs> so you feel that, and what do you do? Start running. Start running through what? The cotton, right? And you can feel it, and it's all over the place, so on and so forth. Okay, what are we going to remember for number four? Heat. 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 Nice one, right? Heat. And what's the key word? Door. Door. 
door to a furnace. The door to a furnace, right? So you imagine whatever your door is, and you open it, and there's heat coming out. Now, as you touch the door, what happens? Burn. You burn your hand. Why? Because of the heat behind the door, right? Can you feel heat coming from the door? When you open the door, what happens? You scream. Ah! You know, real blast of heat. So remember, it's not fire, it's heat. So you've got to get the idea of heat. Okay, number three. What do you remember for number three? What do you want to remember? Tree. That's your key word. What are you going to remember? Pickle. Pickle. Right, you've got to remember pickle for number three. So you've got your tree and you've got to remember pickle. How are you going to do that? Get your senses involved, imagination. A pickle tree. Tremendous. How big is this pickle tree? Enormous pickle tree. Right. What's on it? Pickles. pickles. Where are the pickles? Hanging off the branches. Hanging off the branches. All the way to the ground. All the way to the ground. How big are the pickles? Huge. Huge, right? And what are you doing in the vicinity of this tree? Eating them. Eating them, right? Are you taking them off the tree or leaving them on? Leaving them on. Leaving them on. Eat them, right? <laughs> Tasting the pickles, right? Filled with the smell of the pickles around this giant tree. Number two, what do you want to remember for number two? Computers. Computer and shoe. How are you going to memorize that? These are good because these are difficult. These are, there's no connection in these. Computer and shoe. Kicking, them. kicking it. Kicking. <laughs> All the work. Why are you kicking the computer? Because it's frustrated, right? It's so slow and stupid, and you're so brilliant and amazing with all your brain cells and mind maps and all this kind of stuff. You say, ah, oh, you more, and you kick it, right, with the specific shoe. And what do you feel as you kick it? Pain. <laughs> Pain, right? Feel the shoe, feel it going into the computer, and what happens as it goes into the computer? Noise, big noise, and all the stuff comes spraying out as you feel the shoe doing it all. Okay, what do you remember for number one? Cabbage. Cabbage, right? What's the key word for number one? Bun. 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 And we've got cabbage, right? One bun, cabbage. How do you make the connection? A cabbage bun sandwich. Right? How big is this? How big is this bun? <laughs> then we're going to make it really big, right? It's a giant. And you've got cream in it, and then what have you got all mixed in with the cream? Cabbage. <laughs> cabbage, right? Raw cabbage. You see the giant leaves, and then what are you going to do? Not, you're not going to give it, you're going to take a great big bite, right? Your mouth is going to open really wide, and you're going to ram it in. Uh, what are you going to feel? Yeah. Pale. <laughs> what are you going to feel as you bite that bun? Cabbage. The cream and the cabbage, right? Really feel it. And see the bits of cabbage, you know, hanging on your face and so on and so forth. And that's all you have to do in terms of memory to make sure you memorize at least 50% of the things you want to memorize. And what I want you to do now is take a blank sheet of paper, turn a blank sheet, and you are now going to test yourselves out of 20 this time. Don't talk to your neighbors. I want you to write down the numbers 1 to 10 in reverse order. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Next to each number, I want you to write the rhyming key memory word and the thing that you asked us all to remember. So you'll write number 10, the word that rhymes with it, and the thing we were supposed to remember. And the number nine, and the word that writes rhymes with it, and the thing we were supposed to remember.
exchange your papers with your neighbour and we'll now mark them out of 20. One mark for the rhyming word, one mark for the thing that we were asked to remember by the members of the group. <coughs> and these were not necessarily easy ones. Now I notice to my delight that you're actually marking them already, <laughs> which means that you know the answers. But let's... <laughs> I haven't even asked me for a check. But let's just uh, quickly check through. What's the rhyming word for number 10? Ten. Yeah. Right, is hen. And what are you supposed to remember? Tennis ball. Tennis ball, right? Little, um, we'll sing a little hymn for our hen. Rhyming word for number 9? Uh, fine. Fine. What are you supposed to remember? Cloud. Cloud. Number 8? Bait. Bait. Bait and? Bicycle. Bicycle. <laughs> number 7? Heaven. Heaven. And Heaven. Angel. An angel. Right, one mark for each of these. Number six? Six, six and? Orange. orange. Number, number seven, sorry, number, number five? Beehive, Beehive and? Cotton. Cotton. Number four? Door. Door. Heat. Heat. Number three? Tree. Tree. Pickles. 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 Number two? Shoe. Shoe. Computer. Computer. Not nearly as good as the brain, right? Number one? Bun. 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 Carriage. Carriage. Okay, mark your partners out of 20 and hand that back. <clears throat> now we know from previous memory tests, both in this group and for many, many years, that the average on memory tests out of say 10 or out of 20 is somewhere like three or four out of 10 and four, five, or six out of 20. As the number of things to memorize goes up, the number of things remembered as a percentage gets less and less and less. If you had a thousand things to remember, some people remember only 15. So on a thing like 20, you would normally expect a score of somewhere between four and five, right? How many people in the group now got a score of higher than four or five? Can we just see? Higher than four or five, right? Virtually all. Anybody get a score of higher than 10 in this? Right? Nearly all of us, okay. Anybody higher than 15 in this one? Virtually everyone. Anybody 18 or more? Hands up. Virtually everyone. Anybody get a perfect score, the impossible? About 90%, right? 90% perfect score on memory. And what is fascinating is that if I've given you some of the systems for 100, or a thousand, or ten thousand, the percentage is the same. It doesn't get worse as you improve as long as you know the basic system. You know from the fact that your brain has these many hooks. You know from the infinite storage capacity that as long as you can make the association, it's going to memorize it. And if you've got the systems with which to do it, it will memorize as much as you want. I mean, you'll be memorizing up to ten thousand, as I say, you'll go to sleep, you know, and then you wake up and say, I'll memorize 10,000 more. And then you'll memorize 10,000 more and not off sleep again and say, oh, I'll do 10,000 more. You can go on for the rest of your life memorizing once you know the technique. Now, how did it feel occasionally when you thought you weren't going to memorize, you, when you've forgotten something? What did that feel like? Terrible, right? I mean, it does, doesn't it? Right? What, what kind of feelings do you get? It's terrible. What do you Frustrating. Frustrating panic, fear, depression, right? All those things because we can't memorize. Because the brain deep down knows that it fundamentally can and that something isn't working which should be working. What did it feel like? I mean, how many people here were surprised at the ease with which it all started to happen as they were answering? Right? Again, virtually everyone. What did it feel like when those answers were coming out? How did it feel? Automatic. Automatic. Effortless. Confident. Confident. Didn't have to think at all. Didn't have to think at all. Just like that, right? No problem. Perfect memory score. Anytime you like. Yeah? I'm a genius. Right? And it's true. Being able to memorize releases stress and tension, is easy, is automatic, doesn't require thinking in that way. It's a delight once you know how. Now, now that we know how, Geez, just even on simple little tests or systems like this, what could we use this number rhyme system for? 
in your daily life, personal life, family life, school life? What could you use this kind of technique for? In what situations? Yes. When you're driving in the car and you hear a piece of news information or address or something, you think, I've got to remember that and you can't stop and write it. Right. Very important. In those kind of situations like driving in a car, and you suddenly have a thought. We discussed earlier that the kind of areas or places where you have creative, useful thoughts are in the car, in the shower, in the bath, jogging, so on and so forth. They tend to be places where there's a relative probability that you won't have notepads and pencils and so on and so forth. So you just jot down whatever you remember in your car or bath on a memory system, just the way we've done here. If you've got a phone somebody, you just say, all oh, right, click number one, bun, and imagine that particular person with a phone jammed into the bun and them trying to talk to you and getting the bun all over their face, <laughs> right? Very easy. So in those kind of situations, yes, definitely. What are the uses for these systems? Social situation where you, where, where you meet a series of people and you try and keep their names straight. Very important, right? Names. When you're introduced, especially if you know you've got about six people to meet, I mean, I could give you a 10-hour lecture on kind of introductions of names and faces, but the reason why we usually don't remember names and faces is we don't even see them. You know, we know we're going to forget anyway, so we say, how do you do, 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 and you've been introduced to six pairs of shoes. And then you say, ah, I, I knew I didn't remember. You know, I knew I wouldn't. I knew my memory is no good. And that confirms it for you. Whereas if you've got this little system and you're meeting David, right? Bang, you put that on number one. Next person you meet, Mary, ch -ch, number two. And you can have little images, especially for standard names, so they connect more easily. Names and faces, very useful. That's two we've got. Any other uses for these? Other uses for these little memory systems? Let me give you some, yes. Michael. If you were given a speech, you could make sure you stayed in order. Excellent. You've got a speech to make. Maybe you have eight major points. You could have mind mapped it all, but you don't want to use anything in front of you. So you memorize the major branches of your mind map, and perhaps even a couple of key words off each branch. Put them on the memory system. And then when you're speaking, it's, as we say, effortless. You don't have to think about it. You know that the next thing you're going to talk about is number three, whatever it happened to be, the economic problems in a particular area of the company or the country. So for speeches, marvellous. A couple of other uses, your facilitators will take you through a lot more, but some other very useful ones. One is for mental exercise. This little system is like mental gymnastics. If you do it once every week or once every two weeks, just ask a friend to test you. What skills in your brain are you going to be regularly reviewing and practicing during that time? Association. Imagination. 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 Order. Order. Your senses. In fact, your creativity as well. So they are tremendous mental workout gymnasiums, these little memory systems. People say, oh, what's the point of them? If you don't need to memorize anything, and use them only as brain exercises. They're marvelous. One last use before you deal with your facilitators is for children. If you teach children these systems, what kind of things can they memorize? Anything in school, right? School lists. Now, if a child can remember in test situations as easily and delightfully as you've just remembered in this little one, What's going to be the attitude towards school and their memory? Fun, right? Delightful. Memory test, no problem, right? No problem. Had a case recently where a friend of mine in one of the multinational computer companies had a son, and the teacher came home, or sorry, in the school, said to the children, you're going to have a really tough test today, really tough, and you've got to be ready for it tomorrow. No one in the school is going to be able to do very well. Right? Just to give them a nice positive metal set. Right? And what you've got to do is to memorize all the countries of the world and their capital cities. And here's the list. And this poor 15-year-old boy kind of staggered home and said, oh, Dad, you know, homework tonight, impossible. And the dad had been taught these memory systems in a course that I ran. And he said, well, look, you know, let's just work on it. So they worked for just a couple of hours on imagination, association, getting all these things connected. Boy went to school. Two weeks later, the father got a phone call saying, um, sir, we have a problem with your child. Uh, it's quite serious. We'd like to speak to you personally.
And he said, well, uh, what's the problem? And he said, uh, the teacher said, well, it has to do with cheating in school. So, so the father said, what do you mean cheating? You know, my boy doesn't cheat. So the teacher said, yes, we're fairly sure he does. Um, we don't like to say this because he's always been a good student and we know you're a good parent. But what happened is that we gave the children in the school a test out of 250. And the top mark in the school was 110. Your boy got 250. And therefore, we know he was cheating. And the teacher actually thought that he had some little computer attached to his wrist or something and was reading off all these things where what the boy had done was used the memory systems. They are marvelous, thoroughly recommended. As I say, they are pleasurable, easy, they give you motivation, they're good for professional, personal, schoolwork. Thank you.